If you're building automations with N8N, you're probably making the same mistakes I made when I first started. And honestly, these mistakes cost me hours of frustration and way too many failed workflows. But here's the thing. After building over a thousand automations, I finally figured out what actually works. And today I'm sharing the biggest lessons I wish someone had told me from day one, because trust me, knowing these will save you so much time. So in the next few minutes, you'll learn the essential tips that'll transform transform how you build with N8N. We'll cover everything from the smartest way to run your workflows to the mistakes that'll break your automations before they even start. But first, let me tell you about the one setup decision that changed everything for me. When I started with N8N, I jumped straight into their cloud service at $24 per month. And honestly, I didn't even know there was a better option. But most people don't realize that self-hosting N8N can actually save you up to four times the cost while giving you unlimited workflows and unlimited executions. Instead of paying that monthly fee for limited features, you can run everything for around $5 with zero restrictions. The problem is most people think self-hosting means spending days configuring servers and dealing with complicated technical setup. And that's where Hostinger completely changes the game. What makes Hostinger incredible is their one-click N8N installation. You're literally up and running in minutes instead of hours. You get all the cost savings of self-hosting with the simplicity of a managed service, which is honestly the best of both worlds. So let me walk you through exactly how to set this up. First, head to Hostinger using my link in the description. That link gives you an additional 10% discount with the code ISA, which you definitely want to grab. Once you're there, scroll down and you'll see different plans for N8N hosting. I recommend the KVM2 plan because it's perfect for everything we'll build today and has plenty of room to scale. This plan gives you two CPU cores, eight gigabytes of RAM and 100 gigabytes of storage, which is more than enough to run dozens of complex automations at once. What makes this setup special is that instead of choosing a basic operating system and spending hours installing N8N yourself, you simply select the pre-configured N8N template and Hostinger handles everything automatically. I'd choose Use the 12 or 24 month plan since the value is incredible. After that, select your server location based on where you're located, add the coupon code ISA for that extra discount and complete the setup. When your VPS is ready, usually in a few minutes, the N8N instance will already be running. Click manage and then click manage app. Set up your account credentials and you're immediately ready to start building. The whole process takes under five minutes and you now have a professional setup that would normally require hours to configure properly. Now that we have our setup ready, let me share the first major lesson I learned the hard way. Most people try to build one massive workflow that does everything. They'll create this giant automation that handles emails, updates spreadsheets, sends notifications, and manages their entire business process all in one place. And then they wonder why it keeps breaking. I discovered that smaller focused workflows are way more reliable than one complicated mess. Instead of building one workflow that does 10 things, build 10 workflows that each do one thing really well. For example, if you want to automate your lead management, don't build one giant workflow that collects leads, enriches the data, sends emails, updates your CRM, and notifies your team. Instead, create a separate workflow for each step, and then link them together using the Call NA10 workflow tool. This makes everything much easier to fix. When something breaks, and trust me, it will, you will know exactly which workflow caused the issue instead of digging through hundreds of nodes. The next thing I wish I knew sooner is how to properly test your workflows without it becoming frustrating. When I first started, I'd build a workflow and then trigger it over and over again to test it. If it was a form submission, I'd fill out that form 50 times. If it was an email trigger, I'd send myself 50 emails. This was absolutely exhausting and there's a much better way. You can can pin data in N8N, which means you save a sample of your data and use it for testing without triggering the workflow every single time.
time. After you run your workflow once with real data, open any node and you'll see a pin icon at the top. Click that and the data stays there permanently. Now you can test and modify your workflow using that pin data without having to trigger it again. But what makes this even more powerful is that you can actually edit that pinned data. Click the pencil icon next to the pin and you can change any values you want. This is incredible for testing different scenarios without having to create real test cases every time. Another huge lesson I learned is about error handling. Your workflows will fail. It's not a question of if, it's a question of when. And if you don't have proper error handling set up, you won't even know when things break. The solution is setting up an error workflow. This is a separate workflow that automatically triggers whenever any of your other workflows encounter an error. You can have it send you an email, a Slack message, or whatever notification method you prefer. To set this up, create a new workflow with an error trigger. Then go into the settings of any workflow you want to monitor and select that error workflow from the dropdown. Now, whenever something goes wrong, you'll be notified immediately instead of discovering it days later when a client asks why nothing happened. Now let's talk about AI agents, because this is where NA10 gets really powerful, but also very confusing. When you first open the AI agent node and look at the tool section, you'll notice there aren't that many options. You might think you're limited to just those few tools, but you can access literally any app or action by using the call N8N workflow tool. This lets your main agent call specialized sub-agents that can do anything you want. For example, your main agent might handle the conversation and decision-making, but when it needs to send an email, it calls your email sub-agent. When it needs to update a spreadsheet, it calls your spreadsheet sub-agent. This keeps each agent focused and reliable. To pass data between your main agent and sub-agents, you'll use the when called by another workflow trigger in your sub-agent. This trigger can accept parameters so your main agent can send specific information like email addresses or message content directly to the specialized workflow. The next thing I wish I knew is how to handle rate limiting. This one caught me off guard so many times. You'll build a workflow that processes hundreds of records and suddenly it just stops working. This happens because most apps have limits on how many times you can call them per minute. If you try to add 500 rows in one minute, it'll cut you off. The fix is simple. Add a wait node between your actions. Even just one second of wait time is usually enough to avoid hitting those limits. It makes your workflow slightly slower, but it actually finishes instead of crashing halfway through. Another tip that'll save you hours is that you can move multiple nodes at once. Just hold down shift and drag your cursor over the nodes you want to select. Now you can move them all together, copy them, or even paste them into a different workflow. This is especially useful when you're reorganizing a complicated workflow or when you want to reuse parts of one workflow in another. Just select everything you need, copy it, open your other workflow, and paste. Speaking of copying, get into the habit of saving your workflows constantly. Hit Command S or Control S after every major change. I learned this lesson the hard way after spending two hours building a complex workflow, accidentally closing the tab and losing everything. Now let's talk about working with data because this is probably the most important thing you'll learn. Understanding how data flows through N8N will make or break your success with the platform. There's text, numbers, dates, and Boolean values, which are all pretty straightforward. But then there's arrays and objects, and these are where most people get confused. An array is basically a list. Think of it like a shopping list with multiple items. An object is a collection of key value pairs like a contact card with a name, email, and phone number. When you have a list of items, like a list of leads from a form, you'll need to process them one by one. That's where the split out node comes in. It takes your list and goes through each item individually. For example, let's say you scrape 10 leads from a website. They come in as one array containing 10 objects. If you try to add that array directly to your CRM, it'll probably fail because the CRM expects one lead at a time, not a list of 10. So you use split out to break that list apart. Now N8N processes lead one, then lead two, then lead three, and so on. After processing each lead individually, you can use the aggregate node to bundle them back together if needed. Another useful tip I learned is about workflow templates. You do not need to build everything from scratch. N8N has hundreds of pre-built workflows that you can use as starting points. Go to the templates section, find something similar to what you want to build, and customize it. This saves so much time because you're starting with something that already works. You just need to update the creative
credentials, modify the prompts, and adjust the triggers to match your specific needs. And finally, my biggest piece of advice is to expect things to break and plan for it. Test each step individually before connecting everything together. Use the execute node button to test each action separately. Make sure your API keys work, your prompts generate the right output, and your data flows correctly between nodes. Only after you've made sure that each piece works perfectly, you should connect them all together and test the full workflow. This approach takes a bit more time upfront, but it saves you hours of debugging later. So now you know the essential lessons that took me a thousand automations to figure out. And with Hostinger's one-click setup, you can have your first automation running in the next 10 minutes at a fraction of the usual cost. With self-hosting, you get unlimited workflows and unlimited executions, which gives you complete freedom to experiment and scale without worrying about monthly fees or execution limits. If you want to start building powerful automations the right way, use the link in the description and code ISA at checkout to get that additional discount. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.